So I've hooked up the Vive Tracker to Cinetracer. We got everything up and running here and I'm operating the virtual camera and one of my Cinetracer scenes. And this has like a really cool effect when you're operating it. It's, it's a lot of fun. Hello and welcome to this virtual production vlog. We're on our third one here. Pretty good series so far. But today we're gonna get this virtual camera up and running using the Vive Pro the Vive Tracker, which is this guy right here. And we're gonna get that into Unreal Engine and maybe into Cinetracer. Okay, so now everything is unboxed from the Vive Pro. We have these two base stations. These are basically sensors that are keeping track of where everything is. Uh, this is the head-mounted display, the HMD, right? So this is where you, you put this on and you're, you're in the video game, so to speak. And these are the two motion controllers. So if you've never used VR before, uh, the great part about it is that the system is always tracking the position of these and their rotation. And there's a bunch of buttons on them too. So I can use this for the virtual camera as well. So uh, I'm gonna put the Vive sensors, the base stations in the corners of the room. So we're gonna put one there. I know this is kind of disorienting, but I'm just filming it anyway. And we're gonna put one there. So this is for all you grips out there. I have these two types of uh, Scissor clamps here, this one's uh, Kupo, this one's made by Alzo, and these ones are a little smaller and they come with these little cable clamps too, so those are for drop ceilings. And then the end goal is to get this, um, you know, this base station with a quarter 20 in it. Uh, we have baby to quarter 20 with a little uh, adapter there and we'll put that there. And as long as it doesn't wobble and is stable, I think everything is going to be okay. Okay, the second one is installed here. I gotta peel off the old wrapper. So I just got the second sensor over there, and this one is here. So that gives me basically this entire floor area to work with. Uh, I think they're gonna be pretty stable uh, as long as you don't pull on the cable. You see, I have some like some drop ceiling kind of like relief mounts for the cable, and then this one comes down. It's on the wall. That's what I had to do. It's not the best. I Kind of command strip that there and... Okay, so after about like two hours of messing around, I have the base stations installed. They look really nice actually. And I changed my camera rig to actually use the controller now. And uh, this came from a comment on Instagram. I forget the person's name, maybe I'll, I'll shout them out. Um, but the controller, it does the same tracking. You don't have to buy the Vive Tracker for people that want to do this uh, in Cinetracer or Unreal Engine. And then you actually have controls so I can like change focus and focal length and stuff with the controls on the controller. It's just makes more sense. So this, this is a Red Rock micro cage here uh, from my 7D. And I just basically have two clamps on here. So this is the Vive controller, right? And I just have it so that you can like super clamp it in like this. Uh, I think it works pretty well. You also want to get the controller uh, so that the sensors here are seen by the base station. So before I had it like kind of low, this keeps it on top. So I will show you the first prototype I made in Unreal Engine in like a new project. Uh, I'll show you basically how that works. It's really, really easy. Uh, and then I'll be integrating this same exact setup into Cinetracer. That I can't show you. That's pretty complicated. Those cameras are like massive blueprints. Uh, but uh, let's check out how the virtual camera works uh, in a stock Unreal Engine setup and then yeah, Cinetracer time, baby. So this is my test uh, virtual camera setup. It's the first one I made. And I made an actor that basically has a camera in it and that's it. And all you do literally is ask for the position and rotation of the track device, which is the controller, and then you set the camera rotation and position to that. That is it. That's the whole setup. I mean, I'm going to do a lot more than this in Cinetracer, but this is like the backbone of how a virtual camera works with a Vive, or really any, any tracking system. Okay, so I'm going to pick up my virtual camera now. Uh, you can see that the Vive is tracking it, right? So there's this controller, and it, it needs to be seen by that station and the one over there. I could probably add more. And we are doing our very first virtual camera. Now, it's a boring one. I can't change focal length, I can't focus, I can't do any of the uh, Cinetracer trickery I have built in, but it is the prototype for sure. Uh, I'll put it on my shoulder like this to the mannequin, right? So I can kind of walk around him, 
Uh -huh. Pretty cool. All right, and so you get a uh, different rotation than you would if you were just like animating this uh, as a free camera. There's a lot to talk about there, but overall, you could hand this virtual camera to any filmmaker who's used to being handheld like this, which is a lot, and they should be able to come out and pick out some shots here like this. They don't have to know anything technically, right? I'll make it so you can zoom in and focus and all that stuff. Okay, so now I've got the virtual camera set up with Cinetracer here. So we're picking up our virtual camera here. I think the height's a little bit off, but you can see now that the Vive tracker or controller is working and I've mapped it now to a camera in Cinetracer. So with the controller, I can zoom out or zoom in and then I can just kind of wander around this scene like I was in the real world. Like this, zoom out to maybe here, just like a reasonable little shot. So this is the mocap from before with the Roco Rococo suit. So I've hooked up the virtual camera to Cinetracer, as you can see right now. So this is technically already possible in Cinetracer and the handheld gives this a whole different vibe, right? Uh, this is the mocap from yesterday that we did with the Roc Rococo suit. And I can change focal length with the controller here. I can zoom in. I'm gonna come a little lower. All right, like this. Pretty awesome. Uh, any frame rate drops are mostly because I'm ray tracing a bunch of the lights just to make them look good. Uh, the capture latency is really not noticeable and so it's all lighting performance right now. But I wanted to make a scene that looked like kind of realistic. All right, so his focus is off, I'm going to change to his focus. All right, so we'll come in for a little side shot over here for him. Look at this. Yeah, and the handheld gives it like really cool. Like a really cool look. Uh, you could put this now on a tripod and get natural tripod movement on a crane, steady cam, uh, if you wanted to. And it's pretty similar to how they shot the Lion King with virtual cameras. Okay, so that is gonna wrap it up for this virtual production vlog. This got way crazier, really faster than I thought it was going to. I didn't know how long this was gonna take me to do. It's not very hard to do an Unreal Engine at all. The Cinetracer part, that's, that took me a couple years, but um, just getting the tracking into Unreal Engine is like super seamless. And I wasn't sure if this was gonna become like an actual Cinetracer feature or it would be like, you know, just use it in Unreal Engine, but you can 100% just do this in Cinetracer now, like fully crazy. I think I said it already. You just need Cinetracer. Uh, Cinetracer is already on Steam, so you'll have Steam VR, which you need and then a Vive, just get any old Vive. And you don't need as much room as I have here either. You don't even need the rig, you could just use the controller if you wanted to, but um, this is gonna be like a very like consumer, prosumer way of doing virtual production with a camera like this. And trust me, it's very different. Like you can use the mouse and the keyboard or the uh, Xbox controller, those are great. But once you use it with the Vive controller, it just takes on a whole different feeling. And if you want to operate cameras with like a tripod you have, you can do that. Just stick this on a tripod on a crane and the movement you get from it is just really interesting. And I think it's also just a lot more realistic to walk around the scene in 3D with uh, the handheld camera like this. It's just, you just get this like, you know, parallax thing by moving back and forth. It's like as close as you're going to get to being in VR without actually being in it is using a uh, motion controller and then looking through uh, one of these cameras. It's uh, kind of incredible. And also combining this with the Rococo animation, I mean, it's like, this is getting kind of, kind of nutty. And I think the next integration I'm gonna try, which looks pretty easy, is to film with this camera live while we also use Cinetracer and puppet one of the characters with the suit live. So this would take two people, obviously one person on the camera, one person in the suit, and I, I think that's gonna work in Cinetracer. I, I think that's gonna be okay. Definitely works in Unreal Engine. There's no question there. Um, but equally excited to get it working in Cinetracer. So yeah, we got the Vive up and running. We got the virtual camera up and running. It works in Cinetracer. Like this is, this is crazy. This is crazy. So um, yeah, I'm kind of speechless myself. I, I just got done filming and it, it, it's crazy. It's really crazy. Okay, I'll see you guys on the next vlog.